Hey, tutorials by Andrew Buckle. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how you can use a really useful little extension called Font Self Maker. Now, you can find the Font Self Maker via their website and obviously just a quick Google search for it and creates great fonts in OTF format. Now, before I've always been creating fonts in things like Font Lab and Fontographer, but this is quite useful because it's within Illustrator. There's also a Photoshop version available as well. Now, one of the things to do really first is to set up, I think, quite a useful way. It's the little boxes. Now, these boxes here I've created using guidelines. So very easy to create these boxes. Just go over here and you can just select any part and then just go to the view and guides and make guide. And then you just get a little box. And I've done that. Now, you'll notice there's actually 26 across there because that's A, B, C, etc. The usual sort of things. And now I've got 26 across here. That's for the lower, uh, obviously lowercase a, lowercase b, etc. And I've got one here for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 10 there. And I've created another batch for the 30 odd sort of characters, dollar signs, pound signs, etc. And you'll notice in my case, the, the actual uh, designs are not, so obviously they're just uh, very lined in this case. But of course you can create a, b, c, etc. Those sort of things. Do what you want, obviously do it with the tool. Now, once you've actually created these, these designs, and I've every one of them, I've actually used the Pathfinder. I've actually gone there, united them, so they're all being combined and created into one actual path. So, now, what you can do then, just select there, select all of those, and then just drag that down to font make that font self maker now I'm going to go to the next stage before that I'm just going to go to window and extensions and there's the actual font self maker and it's extension it's not a plug-in in the sense of that you would normally find in like the object menu you go over object and you just see the filters there and that sort of thing but this one's an extension so it's just there and you get this little panel that pops up right that's that cleared up. So what do you do then? Just drag that across and you'll see it comes up. You can cross over there and I'm going to go for uppercase alphabet, 26 letters it says. And so it does that and you'll see it going away, processing those, each shape, group of, com it's just finished. So you've got all the designs there. You've got space, A, B, and you can see they've all been nicely, that 26, all nicely slotted in to that there. Now what you can do then, just drag that across there, and then I want to put these into the lowercase. Again, 26, and it will just continue to do that. So it's added all those, and you see it got the lowercase now, P, lowercase Q, R, etc. Now, when you've got the numbers, so you can just select over there. Numbers 0 to 9, so that's so obviously 0, 1, 2, etc. And then you've got these ones. Now, this is slightly different. I'm just going to... I could select all of them and then I'm just going to select a couple. So I just drag that and then just drag them over anything else. So just anything else. Now, you'll see what happens there is that they're unassigned. That's this little thing. Personally, I wish that was not actually displayed because I do realize. Now, just go down there and select and then maybe like percentage. I'm going to go for percentage in this case. Let's give it a character and you've got that there, turn, and I'm going to go over to this one, and I'm going to go for dollar. So you've got that. So they've all been selected. Now say you don't want an actual, if you want to say, I don't want a seven. I mean, obviously I would want a seven, but what you can do, just select that, number seven, and you can just go up here, and there's a little, see the little close thing there, delete. So you just say delete, and there it deletes it. So you've got so six and eight. So obviously seven now doesn't exist in that font. Right, so you can there's also other things you can modify. Now there's a nice little feature here which is quite good. Notice this is the reason I've created them all in these boxes as well. So I've created them all in these boxes because I want them all to be nicely aligned all the way. You can see them all nicely uniform. If you don't have these boxes in these guides, you can have them sort of end up a bit more higgly piggly. So what you can do, you can actually go and select over there, and then you can see you can actually move that around. So you can actually say you want that one a bit further up when you actually type the lowercase v, that's going to be further up. So you can move that, and you can also 
modify letter space and lines, but I'm not going to do all that sort of stuff. Obviously, with a decorative design, like this, there's no point going into the fine these sort of things. Now, obviously, here I've got new, so I, this is the key thing new to actually create it. So, I'm, this has been so if I didn't want all this, I could just quickly go new and it would refresh it all and I could start again. Don't want to do that, so I'm just going to go next to font infos. In, info, get that right. Now, there's a whole range of different things. Would be nice if you could actually have this as sticky. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not sticky because uh, you could just give it a name, whatever. I'm going to call mine stretch lines or something like that. I haven't decided yet. And set that to regular. Obviously, Andrew Buckle, etc., etc., W Graphics Extra or whatever. And all the way down and copyrighted, etc. All that. Once you've finished, then go back. Now, you've done all that, you've created all the designs, and you want to install it, or install, just click that, and it will be installed so you can access it within Illustrator. Now, I'm not gonna do that, because I don't, but right, Illustrator will Photoshop all the Adobe apps, so that's the key thing here, just click that, or you can click Export, and this is the useful thing, Export, so it generates an OTF file, so just, Click there, export, and obviously give a name, and then click OK. And it will save it as an OTF file, which can then be installed in using FontBook or using the control panel and font panel on Windows. That's a quick run through of some of the features. Obviously, there's a vast amount of other things you can do with this. It's just a great little tool, very easy to use within Illustrator, and you can quickly create some very interesting designs. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.